From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Andrea Lutz. Someone seems to be slashing tires in Gallatin County. We'll have that story in a minute, but first. The bipartisan infrastructure bill faces a procedural vote in Congress today. This is your leading look. That would require at least 60 votes in the Senate. Republicans plan to filibuster the bill. The package still faces questions over how to pay for the $1 trillion price tag. Missoula County Republicans are questioning local election officials after they say there's no paper trail for thousands of ballots. They ended up with 4,600 fewer envelopes than Missoula County reported in 2020. Election officials say that's untrue and they have the documentation to prove it. South of Venice, the Goose Fire is approaching 6,400 acres. The fire started by lightning is 24% contained. There was some light rain, though, overnight on that fire. An evacuation warning remains in effect for the Robertson Draw Fire south of Red Lodge. Tuesday, crews attacked the fire from the air and picked up efforts on the ground. Containment is 85%. That's your leading look. Well, let's go ahead and talk trends. Now, we know over the next several days we're going to be drier and warmer than average. Well, let's take a look at the next 8 to 14 days. We're talking the end of July, first part of August, and it's not looking good. In terms of our temperatures, a 50, 60, 70 percent chance we're going to be warmer than average, a 30 to 40 to 50 percent chance we're going to be drier than average. But we do have rain in the forecast and maybe severe storms today. We'll take a look at that and a whole lot more with the main forecast coming up in just a bit. The many fishing access and recreation areas between Lions Bridge here and the Palisades Recreation Area, both of which south of Venice, are used by hundreds if not thousands of people every summer. So when at least 15 different uh, car and truck owners came back and found their tires slashed, the Madison County Sheriff's Office began to investigate, but it's the businesses that really felt the impact. It's pretty vindictive, pure straight vandalism. Vehicle by vehicle across nearly 10 miles of various Madison River access points, people returning to their cars and trucks found their vehicles looking like this last Wednesday morning. A number of them fishing guides and clients. That's not right. I don't care. In all of his 25 years shuttling people from Ennis to the river, Claude Moholland says it could send the wrong message about the area. One of his clients was another victim. It's pretty... <clears throat> It can hurt it because people will be uh, apprehensive about coming here. Each with out-of-state license plates between Lions Bridge and $3 Bridge. With no cameras installed in such a rural yet internationally known portion of the Madison River, deputies say it will be difficult to find a culprit. It's very important for us, uh, for any of the fishermen that fish on the river. They have to have access to the river and this gives them access. But this is not stopping people like Claude. People are going to fish and they want to fish and they're not going to let that kind of thing, this kind of thing, deter them for what they want to do. What are we going to let some criminal stop us from doing what we want to do? I'm not. It's an important part of our lives here in Montana. Madison County Sheriff's Office says anyone who knows any information is asked to call them at the number at the bottom of your screen right now. They do say it's going to come down to tips for this again since there are no cameras in this area. So any call and any information could help solve it. In Madison County, Cody Boyer, MTN News. The Lewis and Clark County Commission has removed the COVID-19 public health emergency for the county. 494. That is the amount of days that Lewis and Clark County has held a countywide public health emergency due to COVID-19. And on Tuesday, that emergency declaration has been terminated. The emergency declaration begun on March 13th, 2020, in response to COVID-19 surging in the county, requesting residents to stay home and to wear a mask in public. Now the county commissioners have looked at the amount of cases countywide and the amount of vaccinations to determine the seriousness of the declaration today compared to March 2020. 
And although COVID-19 still impacts the community, there is now a vaccine as well as federal and state support. According to the commissioner's statement, COVID-19 is now a vaccine preventable disease and the ongoing delivery of the vaccine continues to prevent infection and severe outcomes. Meaning that through the creation of the vaccines and protocols the county has developed through the last year, and with 56% of county residents fully vaccinated, they feel confident to end the emergency declaration. The commission also stated, should commissions change and the public health situation require additional resources or coordination, the COVID-19 response structure can be reactivated to address any challenges that may arise. Ending the emergency does not impact the county's ability to get federal funding, but indicates they're scaling back their operation in COVID response now that it isn't as needed. The Lewis and Clark County Commission is now working toward a recovery plan to conduct an after action report. In Helena, Jordan Johnson, MTN News. I'm Dennis Bragg in Missoula. Missoula County Public Schools rolling out new schedules for students this fall. Schedules that were adjusted after lessons learned during the pandemic. The district had been talking about a late start for high school the past several years. The pandemic prompted a complete top to bottom review of the entire schedule. This next year, our goal was to get back to the regular school day length, um, but also maintain some of those things that worked really well for us, including a later start time for high school. So the district is adjusting, not just for high school, but all classes. That includes a little earlier start for middle school, uniformity for elementary dismissal, and late start for high school, especially on Thursday at 9.40 a.m., building on the student improvement noticed last year. Students were more alert. They seemed to have a better attitude, maybe because they were getting more sleep. I have no idea, but they, just their mental health and social-emotional stuff seemed to be better this year. Now, we hope that that doesn't translate to, you know, middle school students kind of, you know, being growly when they get there, but we're hoping that we can adjust that middle school start time in, in future years. Watson sees real improvement with the elementary dismissal changes. Traditionally, elementary had, you know, half the students releasing at 3 and the other half at 3.30, which was really difficult for families if you had multiple students in the same school. Part of the challenge was bus schedules. Watson says beach transportation was very cooperative, working around issues like bus seat belts and the available resources. They're limited by the number of drivers that they have available in the community. And so, unfortunately, we can't all start and end at the same time. We have to have some stagger in there. Although administrators have spent a tremendous amount of time fitting all these schedules together, Watson says there may have to be some adjustments in the future. We would hope that we can use this next year to kind of analyze all of that and try to find some better times. That will depend on how much you know flexibility we can get with our transportation services, but we'd hope to use this year to try to figure out what some of those problems are and figure out some um, maybe some better solutions in years to come. And that's where the district wants that community feedback. I think any time we can develop processes that make it a little bit more family friendly, like the common release time at elementary. I think I think we need to try to do that, even though it may not be perfect and we may we may have other challenges in other areas. We need to try to do that in Missoula. Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Coming up next on the new news, Miller Robson's back in with a look at that statewide weather forecast. Plus, we're taking you to Uptown Butte, where a very special dedication is paying tribute to a Butte icon. Stay with us. The MTN Noon News continues right after this.